Yo, 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 one, two, one, two, what it do? This is your boy Skeeter Steve, and welcome to another episode of Lace Rounds, where we're giving it to you for the culture and by the culture. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, man, uh, JT couldn't be on this episode, man, because he got a lot of family stuff going on, you know what I'm saying? My man's is busy, though, but we're going to have him back next week, you know what I'm saying, though, but until then... You got me, the one and only Skeeter Steve, and we rocking out solo dolo today. Yes, yes, yes. First and foremost, man, let's get into it, man. Uh, uh, coming off a great weekend, you know, celebrated my 36th birthday, you know. You know what I'm saying? It was a great one, you know, was getting the love from everybody through social media, text, cash app. Yeah, man, everybody was sending your boy love, man. So, I mean, I appreciate it, though. But also, too, first and foremost, man, on top of my birthday, man, I was able to and thankful to share my birthday with my father, you know what I'm saying? So, me and me and Pops got the same birthday, and you know right now, man, if you can hear behind the echo, man, we got some rain going on here in Vegas. It's monsoon season, man, so, you know, it's coming down, though, so go ahead and bear with us, man. We got a lot for you in store, in store, in store, in store, man. So, I mean, a lot has went down, like, you know, with the culture, man. So, you know, it was a lot going on, you know, T.I., to, uh, 20 years, you know what I'm saying, uh, hip-hop, trap music, we're going to get all into the good stuff, and we're going to be finally able to to get into that Reason album later on on this show, though, so, you know, let's, let's get into all the funky good stuff. Starting off, first and foremost, you know what I'm saying, we always do honorable mention where we always got to honor something that is just great and phenomenal on um, what's going on within our culture, so this week we're going to honor... Uh, Hit Boy and his dad, Big Hick, because his dad, Big Hit, celebrate his first billboard in Times Square. Hit Boy has given honor to his father, Big Hit, for having his very first billboard posted in the heart of Times Square in New York City. This past Friday, the Grammy Award winning producer took it to Twitter and posted a picture and a massive billboard of himself, his father, Big Hit, aka Chauncey Hollis Sr on the promotion of his boobop song that's going crazy during Amazon Music. And Hit Boy had acknowledged that Big Hit was able to accomplish this after being released from prison 90 days ago. Man, that is so major. Hip, the Hip Hop 50th and my dad get his first billboard ever in Times Square for only 90 days out of prison, he said. That's, a, that's hard as hell to me, man. And you know what, honestly, I really, really think that's dope, though, man. Ever since uh, we heard Big Hit on the HS87 compilation, this was, like, back in 2014, we never knew, like, Big Hit could get down like that and have a have a dope rapping ability. But, you know, certain things had got him caught up, and he had to go back and, you know, do time, though. But he had got out, and once he had got out, he was all over Surfer Drown, Volume 2 with his son, just, you know, just going through and just rhyming his ass off and to see him to have you know his music all over billboard in times square in new york city that is major man though so you know definitely props to you big hit you're gonna be deserving of everything that is coming your way like you know what i'm saying and we're gonna be looking forward for you to do big things and you know hear us at slaves rounds we're gonna report those things that you do for the culture all right let's get into it y'all commentary for the culture man you know a lot a lot a lot has went down though but first and foremost let's congratulate none other than t.i.p aka t.i celebrating 20 years of the trap and you know 20 years of trap music being out you know what i'm saying the mc had uh you know said dropping uh 
uh, series of mixtapes prior before that album in the streets volume one through three which have built up a buzz T.I. showcase commercial potential delivering his impressive guest verse on Bone Crusher never scared that was the ill track around that time around 2003 uh, Bone Crusher never scared had everybody turned up man and I want to believe yeah that was my sophomore year of high school so yeah if y'all remember that track uh Bone Crusher never scared with him and Killer Mike oh yeah 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 that that's a classic for sure for sure definitely for sure and you know um T.I.'s passion comes through car speakers when he yells I'm a bake head nigga I'll take your cookies <laughs> yeah I remember that line that line was dope though and business partner Jason Greater orchestrated a joint venture with his label Grand Hustle that once dropped him and the second chance T.I. made more him motivated than ever as he prepared to prove it in his upcoming sophomore work and trap music. Now, if y'all don't know when I'm Serious came out, he pretty much said, you know, I'm Serious was kind of like a trial and error for him because, you know, uh, Andre... Andre uh, Reed was making transitions from La, uh, La, from LaFace to Erisa Records in New York, though. But LaFace was a record label that dealt out of in Atlanta. So, you know, everybody was kind of like on LaFace. Usher, TLC, Outkast. So what he did, he ended up grabbing like all those main people and pretty much moving them over to Erisa. But he didn't bring T.I. over there with him because, you know, I'm serious it was a great debut, but he even said it himself. It didn't do the numbers that he really didn't, that it didn't do. And he ended up getting dropped, you know, from the, uh, from the label and going in, you know, going back from square one, uh, dropping these mixtapes and, you know, just flooding us with these mixtapes with Industries Volume 1 through 3 and, you know, getting that buzz. And then, you know, he said, uh, 20 folds, they were all, you know, in the van, old school way, grinding. Passing that song around every single radio station that they came across, you know, in each state that they traveled to. And then, you know, he gets signed to Eversur and then we get uh, trap music and trap music has so many bangers on there. You know, I just uh, just said 24s, Rubber Band Man, Be Easy hey let's get away so i mean this cd like it, it holds up the test of time man and not for nothing like you know um uh, he is like you know og that that coined that phrase trap you know what i'm saying and we definitely can't take that away from him we definitely can't take that away from him so here at lace rhymes ti you know what it is man we definitely salute you 50 years of hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, this is dope. 20 years of trap music, man. You deserve it all, brother. You definitely, definitely deserve it all. All right. Next up. <laughs> you know what? We've been seeing them go at it, you know, back and forth for a minute. You know, Danny Lay and the baby, you know, with, they, with, you know, with the co-parenting drama, even where to the point where... Danny Leg brother try to run up on the baby, and the baby just gave him a little two piece and whooped that ass, <laughs> pretty much. But he tried to say, "Oh, I got jumped." Nah, nigga, you didn't get jumped, bro. You got your ass whooped, plain and simple. You really, really did get your ass whooped, though. But this, other than that, man, this brought you know. It's always good to see shit like this, you know. The, the baby and Danny Leg put their issues aside for their daughter's second birthday party. And it's always good, like, you know, when you see the friction between the mother and the father. But it's not about that. It's about the kids. You know what I'm saying? The kids come first. You know what I'm saying? Even if that, that man get on your nerves or that woman get on your nerves, you know, do it for the kids, man. So the baby and Danny Lay had a, you know, turmoil of a relationship throughout the years. You know, like I said, but they were able to put the differences aside as they came together to celebrate their daughter's second birthday. The uh, daughter, Valor, turned two this past Friday, and the pair celebrated a luau-themed bash the following day. In the clips of social media, they were all, all the exes were in smile alongside their baby girl. So, I mean, this is always good, and it's always dope to see, you know, for the culture and not only only the culture, you know, letting you know that co-parents 
can exist within the same space, even if they want to hate their guts. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's always good to see that. Always, always very, very good to see that. All right. Uh, next up, the man, the myth, the legend, Kanye West, a.k.a. Ye. Ye, new album. He said we got a new album coming. But Ye said with this new album, it's going to be a mix of College Dropout and The Life of Pablo. Now, my question is, are we here for it? That's what I want to know. Like, are we really, really here for, here for it? Because, you know, you know, Ye has his ups and downs. You know what I'm saying, though? But one thing we can't, can't deny, he is a musical genius. We we can't we definitely can't take that away from him. Despite how you feel, the man is a musical genius and he put in work and he earns that right to be one of the greatest of all time in this hip hop culture. So Mr. Ye is back in the studio working on a new album and new information surrounding the LP theme has hit social media. Yeezy is reportedly gearing up for the next LP record. Uh, and according to the prominent leaker insurance, this project is shaping up to be a combination of the college dropout and 2016, the life of Pablo. Not a bad album. Both of those albums were bad though, but life of Pablo was definitely underrated in my opinion. If you ask me, there were only tidbits of information cur courtesy of inserts who claimed that Ye and Ty Dolla Sign has been in recent studio sessions at the Opium collectively in Italy. He compared finished tracks of uh, My Beautiful Disc, uh, Dark Twisted Fantasy Level. The project has insane features amid Ye Ye's blacklisting from the music industry, was previously titled Change Before, changed his mind in the LP tentatively to be slate for an October release now is we gonna get it i don't know i don't know only time would tell only definitely definitely time would tell if we're gonna get it though but you know i'm i'm here for it i'm definitely here for it because the don the serious down to one and down to two wasn't that bad you know he he did his thing and did his thing and you know basically brought that church soulful aspect to the Don the series. So but he's saying if it's a if it's a mashup between his first album and the life of Pablo and cause they're both they both got bangers. So we're gonna get that you know that 2004 feel with that 2016 feel. I'm definitely definitely I'm definitely here for it. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 definitely here for it. And and hopefully the features would be good. You know what I'm saying, and I'm not putting it on a high, on a high expectation, on a on a expectation, uh, expectation. My bad. You know to, um, uh, you know to, to to be like you know a super album of the year or or anything of like that nature or you know that problem of. But I think overall, it's going to be a pretty good solid album, though, because now, you know, we're, get, we're getting solid good albums again. You know, we just had uh, Travis Scott, uh, Mink Jenkins uh, just dropped, but we're going to go over that uh, next week. So, I mean, like, you know, there's a lot of good projects now uh, in this middle of this summer and going into the tailwind. We're going to be getting some good projects because, you know, we had Nas because it, it started off pretty slow. 2023 though but it it definitely definitely picked up that's all i want to say definitely picked up all right before we get into the man can i kick it <laughs> this shit was cracking me up so bad but i definitely had to talk about it melly mel dissing eminem <laughs> dog i just want y'all to listen to this shit like really really listen to this shit like, like I can't, I can't even, I can't even believe this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just listen. No apologies. This ain't a disclaimer. I'm the king of legend, the first Hall of Famer. Making diss tracks, I know you with that. Now everybody get ready for the kickback. Why you hurt? Why you mad? Now you look bad. Like a roach just crawled out of your book bag. In a pack clad, you lack clad. Go to bed with no supper, cause you gotta suffer the backlash. The top five is cap. You the piss just on the floor in the elevator of rap. Why you ducking on the game when you shit on my name? Why they put Pee Wee Herman in the Hall of Fame? I would give you a pound. 
dog. <laughs> <laughs> Melly Mel, we know you're OG. We know like you 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 did your your contribution to hip hop. The message, one of the greatest lyrical songs ever. You know what I'm saying? But this, bro, I'm sorry. This ain't it. You're using that 1983 flow, and you're telling me th throughout these whole generation, mid-80s, late-80s, early 90s, mid-90s, late 90s, early 2000s, mid-2000s, late 2000s, and you still couldn't evolve your flow? Like, bro, bro. Oh, my God. Like, literally, what is wrong with you? Like seriously, man, you've been you've been an old bitter cat pretty lately, man, and I I don't get it. I don't understand why why the bitterness, man. Hip hop always evolved, so you have to evolve with the times, man. Big Daddy Kane has done it, and he put himself to a halt. Jay Z has evolved. Eminem has evolved. So many artists that we had known. You know, to do it in a long time has evolved. Fat Joe is one of them. Busta Rhymes is one of them. You know, you have to evolve with the time. So, but this, bro, them 1983 nursery rhymes, you know, even though I'm a B-boy, but you got me want to do all of that. <laughs> Melly Mel, bro, that shit ain't it. It is not it at all. Like, you got to cut the Merlocky. You got to stop that. <laughs> And this and Eminem, come on, man, don't do that. Eminem is a real thoroughbred MC. This man said, like, one of his favorite songs was Naughty by Nature, Yoke the Joker. One of his favorite MCs is Red Man. This nigga used to battle. He was a battle rapper, too. If you don't believe me, go look up Scribble Jam 96, 97, and 98. You will see Eminem on the stage battling, bro. He just got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He shouted you out and shouted out all the MCs from your era, that uh, late 80s era, the 90s era, and even the 2000s. Mel, come on, bro. <laughs> come on, bro. In the words of Kendrick, in the words of SZA, I be so sick, you nigga. that and Kendrick Lamar. Come on, bro. You out of pocket for that. <laughs> You're really, really out of pocket for that, man. Like, you shouldn't have done that. That ain't for you. Come on, man. You got to do better, Melly Mel. Because <laughs> them ABC 123 nursery rhymes, it ain't it. That wasn't hitting at all, bro. Like, for real. Like, don't, don't do that again, man. Like, seriously. Do not do, not do that anymore like like that was bad <laughs> all right all right all right guys that was uh our commentary you know for the you know for the culture but all right let's get into the good stuff all right can i kick it first up kentucky wildcats become the first nike kobe basketball program <laughs> That's major. Kentucky Wildcats have gained distinction as an inaugural Kobe brand program for the upcoming 23-24 college basketball season. According to multiple sources, Vanessa Bryant, widow of the late Kobe Bryant, specifically selected University of Kentucky as the first Mamba School collaboration with Nike. Their partnership has been in the works for a year, but has now reached its finalization over the next several years. In addition to the program, anticipated to become a part of the initiative. This marks the inaugural collaboration of a university stated cat calling executive director of the Mamba and the Mamba Sita Sports Foundation. All right, let's clap that up. That's dope. I'm here for it, and I'm not gonna lie. This uh, this Kentucky Wildcat Kobe colorway, it, it's it's fire. It's super fire. But I just have one issue. One issue. Now we all know. We know Kobe's from Philly, but he was a diehard Laker. Diehard Laker. But guys, if I'm wrong, let me know if I'm wrong, if, if, I'm, if I'm speaking on this wrong. 
But don't you guys think maybe USC or UCLA should have got a partnership first before Kentucky? Even though they were in the works of working with Kentucky. But that's the home base. You know what I'm saying? Don't you guys think that USC and UCLA should have got their hands on these first? But I'm hoping they'll be able to do more and, you know, grab them because it's Southern California. And we know California loves Kobe. Plain and simple. They love Kobe Bryant. That's just what it is. Ain't nothing changing that, though. But that's my only flaw of this deal. But nonetheless, this is super dope, though. Super dope. And so I guess we're going to be seeing in this upcoming season college basketball, we're going to see, you know, the the Kobe's of the Kentucky Wildcats are going to be wearing, uh, you know, the Kobe sneaker. And hopefully, you know, they do more business and partnerships with other colleges as well, though. But before you do business and partnerships with other college, take care of the home base first. And what I mean by the home base, take care of California first. California love Kobe, so it's only right. Let them let them get the di- get the dibs. Take care of UCLA, US- USC, all these colleges. Hell, I even say, you know, take care of all the the high school cats too out there. You know, Crenshaw, Dorsey High, all these all these schools. You know that that you know loved Kobe. Well, let's just put it out there, California as a whole. Even though Northern California. You know, they got the Golden State Warriors. You know what I'm saying, though? But no pun intended. They still love Kobe Bryant. So I would just say, you know, cater cater to California. That's all I'm saying, Vanessa. We love you, but please, cater, cater to California. Cater to California. That's all I'm saying. You know, all right. Next up. This QB made a lot of noise last season. You know... Be my nine or so, but Brock Purdy went down with the injury, though. But that's no here or there. Went to the Super Bowl, and they're planning on to do another run again, though. And his and his stock has been skyrocketing crazy. And we're talking about none other than Jalen Hurts. But now, let's uh, congratulate Jalen Hurts because he has officially signed with the Jordan brand. The Philadelphia Eagles stand out. Jalen Hurst has officially teamed up with the Jordan brand as they endorse the quarterback. Throughout the 2022 NFL seasons, Hurst spotted the Jumpman logo on his cleats on all 18 games and even in the Super Bowl. So heading into 2023 season, he is now an official member of the Jordan brand. Expressing his enthusiasm, Hurst stated, I'm grateful to join the Jordan brand. Like the jump man, I'm deciding I'm dedicated to the goals, excellence, and inspiring the next generation. That's dope. That's dope. Now, Nike, if y'all gonna give this man his own shoe, y'all gotta make his shoe dope like how y'all did Deion Sanders with the Diamond Turfs. You know, Bo Jackson with uh, you know, with his with his line, and a, and a few others, though. You know, so Jordan, do right by this man. This man, even though he played for the Eagles, you know what I'm saying? Still fuck the Eagles, fuck Philly. But I got to give credit where credit is due. You know, I, you know, <laughs> even though I'm a hey, 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 but the credit still has to be, you know, recognized. And this man has definitely been recognized because they, they have doubted this man you know, last season and the season before that. Like, Jalen Hurst did catch a lot of slack and, you know, put him on a high pedestal, and he definitely delivered, though. So him being endorsed by Nike, this is going to be deals on top of deals on top of deals. So whatever type of sneaker you guys at Nike and Jordan is doing for this man, do him justice. Don't don't be on no whack shit. Don't give him no one two three design like for real. Because if y'all do give him a one two three design, even though he is a dope quarterback, and if it ain't hitting, y'all gonna have to make me trash it. And that's something I definitely don't want to do. I don't want to do that though. But you will make me <laughs> be like Pac. I ain't no killer, but don't push me. That's how I feel. Don't push me. So Nike Jordan. Really do right by this man. And uh, 
and give this man a dope sneaker. You know what I'm saying? Give him a super dope sneaker. That's all I'm asking for. All right. Last but not least, social status, Nike Mac Attack currency arriving next week. And I'm still going to have to go back and grab the Mac Attack, so because that's still a dope sneaker. So social status collab, you know, a Nike Mac Attack currency unveiled an exclusive variation of the Nike Mac Attack OG, which debuted back this June. So this time they're coming with a more color scheme with the ivory and pine. So pretty much pine, if y'all don't know what pine is, it's that green. Definitely with that green. So the overall classic pair downs with a leather mesh suede construction, shoe mills as a leather overlay, striking green hues prominent as a uh, prominent revolved swoosh in colors of the social status, branding the tongues and insoles rear. Retailing at $140, which I think is not bad. Look for the social status and Mac attack, social currency at select Nike stock list and via social status and online on August 25th. I'm here for it. Because, I mean, the day that the Mac Attack drops, you know, the OG colorway, the gray and black, the social status, they did like a, you know, uh, a red a red and white colorway with that too. So, I mean, this is dope to see this pine green. Because, you know, the green has been really kicking a lot of ass this uh, this year. You know, we had got the, the pine green SB4, uh, the Celtic green ones. Uh, the Pine Green Jordan 2s. So we've been getting a lot of green this year. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I do have I do have some green in the, in the stash. I have the Pine Green 2.0, uh, the Pine Green, uh, yeah, 2.0 Jordans, and I have the Celtic Green Jordans. So I wouldn't mind adding this to the collection because from a lot of people, what they have told me that the Nike Air Mac attacks are comfortable, and I like like you know when I when we have reviewed that a few years, I mean, uh, like um, two months back, uh, that uh, that middle part, like you know, it gives that like that midfield, so it's gonna give you that ankle support. And they said literally, this is a sneaker that you could possibly wear all day. So, would this be a cop for me? I would say absolutely. <laughs> I don't know how. JT will feel about this. My my cameraman, I mean my camera guy, Domino, uh, both of my photographers, Queasy and Boo, feel about this. So so I mean, I mean it, it's definitely it's definitely definitely a, a a super super cop for uh for me. So I mean, you know Mac attacks definitely stand out. And again, piggybacking on love to roll out that you know. Uh, the tennis player and Travis Scott did for this shoe. So I'm thinking that it's probably going to sell out, though. Definitely going to sell out. So that concludes our Can I Kick It section. You know, we talked about, you know, the partnership that, you know, Mama Sita doing with the College Kentucky, uh, Jalen Hurst being endorsed by Jordan. And you know this social status currency pine green Nike Mac attack. So let us know in the comments how you definitely feeling about these. Just all about the topics about you know the you know the Mamba Sita uh, endorsing the University of Kentucky, Jalen Hurst with his deal. And let me, let us know if it's a cop or drop for the social status Nike Mac attack. So definitely let us know in the comments on what you're feeling and what you're not feeling in this Can I Kick It session. All right, all right, all right. Moving along, moving along, moving along, moving along. All right. Check the rhymes. Man, three albums that had dropped this week that definitely caught on the radar. And you know, uh, last week, uh, during our top 10 uh, mix sets, you know, we heard the drama between, you know, uh, Musa and Reason TDE. So we're definitely going to go over Porch, uh, Porch, 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 uh, Porches. <laughs> Excuse me. I got tongue twice. I got tongue twists in that motherfucker. So yeah, please forgive me. Forgive me. You know what I'm saying? But um, we're going to start off first with the. Uh, with the guy, Helen from California. And he's definitely been putting in work, man. And and uh just not too long ago, a couple months back, he had did um 
a Gangsta Grills mixtape with DJ Drama Hotshot. And now he's back again. None other than G Perico, Seven Figures Later. So Seven Figures Later consists of 10 tracks, 26 minutes long. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I ain't going to lie. I wasn't really a huge fan at first, but the more and more I started listening to G Perico, he's been growing on me. And I must say, this nigga slaps. <laughs> G Perico slap. So, you know, starting off with Cold Run, you know, that was the opener. And then after Cold Run, you get into this louder. Look, yeah, look. The nigga with the bag is a nigga with the power. Lest that nigga is a coward. Strip him down if he ain't one of ours. Now scream the click louder. Click, 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 click. click, 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 click. It's the click. Click. Let's get this shit clear. I ain't beefing with no niggas. If I was, they'd be dead. From the jet to the car, fuck everywhere or else where I'm from, I'm a star. It's G. Get rich or die trying. Me and the click flew out to a high. Enterprise. Honolulu. I don't eat spaghetti. These hoes no voodoo. No way. Mm. What a great way to, to open up, uh, you know, the album with that louder. Then we go from louder to stop playing. And then you go from stop playing to pressure. Then you go from pressure to hobby. And then you go from hobby. I think, like, you know, one of my favorites, you know, if you're not familiar with him, this will get you familiar with him because he's just explaining to you about, you know, his struggle, his grind, and what he had to go through. Talk that talk. You know what I mean? So... With that being said, we here, seven figures later, this shit don't stop, so that means you don't stop, and when you an entrepreneur, man, it's gonna go wrong way more than it go right, but when it go right, that shit magnify, we right here chilling in the Enterprise Mansion, snook in this motherfucker, CJ Mack, Baguette, doing what we do, think I might jump in the pool, you know what I mean, spend some laps. It ain't an Olympic-sized pool, but it got a waterfall. <laughs> We're going to talk about that Olympic-sized pool eight figures later, you know what I mean? Right now, seven figures later. Not lying to y'all, man. This shit really real. We grow some millions. Enterprise click. Shout out all my niggas. Shout out my home. Really, he was just, you know, throughout the song, like, and, and that what kind of gravitated me the most towards him when he was just saying through 2019 he lost it all lost everything uh, you know uh i had a you know i had a had a pair five pairs of sh uh, shirts wore the same pants down there every day had the same puma so you know he was just telling you about his grind and his glory and then what he said about the entrepreneurship man i really feel him with that man you're going to take a lot of L's, but once you start getting those few W's, man, the shit be so fucking sweet, man. And, and that that definitely what, what gravitated me towards him, you know, just listening to this project. And I'm all like, yo, man, like he's a real, he a real guy, man. Definitely a real guy. And I, and I definitely, definitely like that. So from Talk That Talk, Move Like Us, Passport Ready, and then another one. Definitely, uh, I like this joint going crazy. You and I together, blessed and fair. Fair one day, you love and said you were leaving. I felt so hurt, thought of losing you. That's why. Yeah, uh. I done lost a lot of shit And the things that I did, it was the consequence I'm hitting different continents Then take pics for the gram on some ballin' shit Yeah, baby, I know I wasn't right I understand if you hate me Certain shit don't phase me Like being all alone on a daily I be needing solitude To bring my vision to life and then follow through Do you get it? The way you be talking I knew you wasn't with it uh. You know what else too? Love the sample. Uh, I don't know who originally sampled that song though, but I know 
uh, Currency did a song with Mac Miller called Money Shot, and it's that same sample. So it's dope. You know, it's always dope to, to hear people flipping samples that we heard before, though. You know what I'm saying? So, and then uh, after that, we get into the last track, Challenge. This uh, project was 10 tracks long, 26 minutes and 19 seconds. And all I've just got to say, look, man, if you're not familiar with G Perico, I suggest you get familiar with him, man. This dude has been grinding for a long time, and he's just he's getting better and better and better every time when he drops a project. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so like what I said, I wasn't really a fan at first, so, but when I heard him on on Half a Bird, the track that he did with Dave East, that literally made me go back and listen to his previous projects. And honestly, I could say that I'm a fan of G Perico. So if y'all don't tap in into this, man, I do not know what to say or what to or what to tell you. Like for real. Uh G Perico, seven figures later. You won't be disappointed. Now, here we go. We always talk about, you know, we don't never hear the rapping ass rapping females. But here's one. She is back. You know, she she caused a little controversy here and there, though. But, I mean, the ramen ability is there. And I can't front, though. She's really nice with it. We are talking about none other than No Name. And No Name has dropped a project called Sundial. Now, Sundial is 11 tracks long. You know what I'm saying? Going into, you know, from the beginning, Black Mirror. And then after Black Mirror, which was a great opener, you know, for her project. And then after Black Mirror is we go into Hold Me Down. Love this. And the booth feed the drought. Couple ops bleeding out real heavy. Cop city, ATL, kill ready. And that's your name, people slow. Incentivize money flow. The government got a hold on everything love. What if the love one really don't love love? Diminish the one love we trust. That's us. And you and we get it, we go get it for now. You was with it when benefits was added to the account. I can count on you for a favor for a certain amount. Hold me down, hold me down, hold me down, hold me down. And you and we get it. Yeah, man, she like she was getting in a rapping ass rapping bag on that, and then right after that, balloons uh, caused a, co- a lot of controversy with Jay Electronica with his anti-Semitic remarks, you know, on that track. It's like, jeez, like you know what I'm saying? Boom, boom. Potentially the interlude, namesake was a good one. Beauty supply was definitely a good one, but uh, uh one that I definitely enjoyed was uh was track eight and i mean she did she was kind of talking to the niggas on this so but i mean it's called toxic toxic was fire this he like toxicity my recipe good get that pussy to drip with that drip in the hood good riddance and good dollars making him feel better fuck better want better making me love more or less sex was an ornament something to hang up at christmas time something that sparkle and so sublime real sinister white vinegar clean scrub out the dirt patch where he just hurt me I don't need your bad, bad, I can do bad all by my lonely first homie. Had a whole baby on me, fuck you, nigga. Had a whole baby on me, fuck you, nigga. <laughs> she talking that shit. She said, had a whole baby on me, fuck you, nigga. <laughs> Damn. She wasn't holding back at all. Literally at all. I was just like, man, like, you know. Um... No Name always been a dope, like, you know, a dope MC. Like, really a rapping-ass rapping MC. And I, and I can't front. So, right after Toxic, you get into Afrofuturism, uh, Gospel, and then the last track, Oblivion. Now, it's good to hear from No Name again because the last song we literally heard from No Name is, you know, uh, she had a few songs out here and there, you know, uh, song... 31, 32, and 33 between 2019 and 2020. And we never got, like, you know, like a full, full project from her in, like, in a couple years. So, you know, to see her to return and give us a project in 2023, definitely dope. I'm definitely, definitely here for it. 
Now, you know, the rapping ability is there. So, you know, it ain't no, it ain't no lotto. It's like not like no, no J, uh, no city girls or, you know, uh, Glorilla. And this is what I always talk about when it comes to the females. Like, you know, you have that, have that fuck shit because again, we all like the fuck shit. We, we can't escape it because fuck shit is going to get you turned up. But sometimes we do like the rapping ability, the lyrical content, and we want to hear bars. And that's what No Name is giving you. No Name is giving you rapping ability, lyrical ability, and she giving you bars. Ooh, man. I want to sneeze, but it's not trying to come out. <laughs> bear with me, y'all. Definitely, definitely, definitely bear with me, y'all, though. So, but uh, yeah, man, this album... It's definitely, definitely solid. I'm not going to say it's trash or not say it's like the best thing smoking, though. But it's a definitely solid album. And it's good to hear from No Name again, though. So, I mean, definitely. Uh, 11 tracks, Sundial. You will not be disappointed. You definitely won't be disappointed. And I say, I say to give it a listen. You want some rapping from a female? Look no further. This is it right here. No Name. All right, all right, all right. This is what we was leading up to. This is why the drama happened the way it happened. So, here we go. Starting with that man. TDE. Mafia of the West. Reason. Porches. <laughs> Hopeless in the arrogant, oppression our inheritance, the ops are walking terrorists, death the youth imperative, silent mumble prayers fit. I can't bring my brother back, them gates they don't got stairs fit. Staring down the barrel, my pride guilt, trauma ego, eyes low, liquor drink, hydro, fire smoke, God knows. Call me when that liquor calling, auntie niece's vision balling. They just gave my cousin 12, defend the public, he ain't mourning. He don't give a single fuck. We grew up off Snoop, Dre, and Pac, we got our lingo from. Porches where we linger from. Porches gave me reminiscing. Porches gave me pussy power, confidence, and ego tripping. Porches gave me brothers dying, blocks spinning, hopscotch, caught willing. Dale's death, male sentence, sig smoke, jail visits, heaven low, hell risen. I can't wait, 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 wait. I can't hit another All funeral right. that got a rag on it. Then we get into the to the opener. That was the intro. Then we get into the opener. Whoa. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit, nigga relax, I push the shit to the max, Born, I blew through the racks, I gotta make this shit back. July 2017. Way too many fans and not enough wins in here. I take the shit, make it double, it's feeling like twins in here. God please take the- What a great way to open up the album. You know, from the intro to Caucasian, it states, at it again, another good one. Uh, Broken Winter Break. Broken Winter Break is super, super dope. I'm not even going to lie, super dope. And I ain't, I ain't going to front. I'm surprised I'm not hearing this joint, like, you know, at a lounge or a day party or anything, though. But this, this is a bop. This is a bop. Little bitch, better. Little bitch, better. I let Hey, why you always throwing dubs on that bitch? I'm straight. I let Jesus take the wheel. Glock on my lap. I let Jesus take the wheel. Folks caught a charge. I let Jesus take the wheel. I let. Why you always throwing dubs on that bitch? I'm straight. I let Jesus take the wheel. Folks caught a charge. I let Jesus take the wheel. Glock on my lap. I let. I let. Little bitch, you better. Little bitch, you better. A bop. That is a bop. That 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 is single worthy, but I'm surprised it, it's not getting pushed the way it needed to get pushed. Seriously. That should have got pushed a little bit more, even though it did come out as a single, but it should have it should have got pushed more the way it did. So after that, you better. 
Send to the afterlife. Call me. And then right after call me is another another good one. Fucking um gang shit. This is good too. Spin that never to every time. Reason I really know you. I swear this ain't jealousy. Nah, reason I really know you. Wait, I thought you knew me as Rob. You was my cousin, brother. I love you. Was never at odds. How get into the spot that I'm at ever seven them times. Know that you use my name just for benefits. Hating all in your sentiments. Came DNA ligaments. And that. Uh, was a great storytelling song how like you know family members got into it and then one of the family members ended up killing another family member crazy but very very great storytelling at the finest and another good one right after that with baby tate fuck that nigga ftn this was solid Baby says she tired in the dates. Wanna get to know her, gotta fly out the states. Uh, he don't make your body feel safe. Uh, sleeping with a garden full of snakes. Uh, baby girl, we ain't gotta wait. Nah, swear to God, we can lead a day. Uh, swear to God, we can lead a day. I'm a hey, big stepper, big money, big bezel. Yeah, more important, I bring big trust, big levels. Big business hood, nigga, I'm a big ghetto. Big, uh, you gon' see that once we get settled. Yeah. Ain't tryna rush to get inside you, cause that shit's special. Yeah. And I know that come with more than just some fucking real boss nigga give you money, help you dub it. That lame ass nigga ain't teach you nothing. Let me show I ain't gonna lie, that was a good one. That was definitely, definitely a good one. A, a very good track. And then right after that, you get into Gina with August Alcina, Too Much, Bussin' with Rayvon, Rich Mirage, I Don't Trust You. That's a good one. Family First. Porch Step and the ending Poster Child. So we got 17 tracks, 56 minutes long. Not a bad album, but the only dis uh, discrepancy I would have with this, it it's feel like it's broken up into different pieces and it sounds more like it was, it's like this could be like a two, three part EP series, if I'm being honest, you know. And, and I kind of now hear the frustration. You know, TDE, you know, I kick for y'all all fucking day. Definitely all fucking day, though. But if the man want to release music, let the man release music. And not, and not only that, though, y'all got to help the man. Even though from the first album, what you were saying, Musa, he did he did get the ad lib from Kendrick Lamar. He did get the pop shit, you know, from, from Schoolboy Q. You know what I'm saying? But that's not enough. Y'all got to help the same way, I mean, the same way Soul, J-Rock, Q, and Kendrick Lamar was helping each other and being instrumental in their careers, you know, being on each other's albums and helping each other out on their albums. Y'all got to do that with this man. This man got, got hit, so, but it, 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 he's probably going to have to grow a little bit more for them hits to come out, unless if y'all want to be there to help him. But honestly... This is not a bad album. The album is pretty solid. If I'm bringing this album from a scale from 1 to 10, I'm probably going to give this album a 7.5. And, and a 7.5 and is not bad at all. That's really not bad. So if you motherfuckers think a 7.5 is bad, y'all tweaking. Y'all really, 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 really tweaking. But this album is pure lyrical substance. Got some fuck shit on there. Fuck that nigga. You better, and you better, that's been my go-to when I be in the gym, pumping it up, pumping it up, put them up, put them up, put them up, <laughs> like for real, you have the lyrical substance, you have the bars on there, and you even have some great storytelling story uh, rhymes on this album, so hopefully this album, you know, gets received very well by the critics, because I mean, I gave my, my opinion, you know, it's not it's not trash, but it's not great either. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, the album is not it's not bad. It's a it's a good album. It's a definitely good album because I'm not gonna lie. First initial listen, it didn't get me. If I'm gonna be if I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I'm gonna be honest with y'all all the way. The first initial listen did not get me, but by the third listen, I'm like, okay, I'm definitely fucking with this. I'm really really fucking with this. So this reason album. Portraits, it, it goes like it really, really goes, and you know, seventeen tracks, solid, 
I'm going to say it's a solid, about a good solid nine. A, a good solid nine tracks that I that I definitely fucked with out of the 17. And that's not bad. If y'all think nine is bad, something is wrong with y'all. Like, seriously. It's going to make me start crust, questioning, like, you know, the credibility of you hip-hop niggas. Niggas and niggats. That's all I'm going to say. Niggas and niggats. <laughs> Straight up, like for like for real, uh. But man, like you won't be disappointed at all. All right, all right, all right. Man, I have fun with y'all, like for real. I have fun with y'all. Really got through this whole motherfucker by myself with y'all, man. So you know, props to me, props to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Just staying in tune with us. You know, like I said, JT. He will be back, you know, on the next episode. And we're going to have another new co-host, man. So y'all stay tuned and continue to support as we're revamping. And if y'all don't know what I'm bumping right now, this is that classic black, black sheep strobe like honey joint. You know, shout out to the native tone. Shout out to black sheep dreads. You know what I'm saying, though? But thank you for continuing to support and rocking out with us. Man. Y'all been going up on Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. Instagram, we got to get a little bit better, though. But we just wanted, I just want to say, man, thank y'all for engaging, man. I'm loving the comments. I'm loving the, the new followers. Shout out to the new followers on all the social media platforms. You know what I'm saying? We are on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, SoundCloud, Apple, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Bay, Bean. You name it, we own it. You name it, we own it. We name it, we own it. Uh, uh, this is Lace Rom Crew. Uh, uh, this is Lace Rom Crew. Uh, uh, this is Lace Rom Crew. You dig? <laughs> yes, sir, man. But you know, we always going to continue to give you that latest and greatest in hip hop culture and sneaker culture. But until then, this is your boy Skeeter Steve. Lace Roms, we out. Yeah, yeah.